In this time of advent longing, we await our Savior's coming, filled with hope and expectation of a coming peace, salvation, filled with hope and expectation of a coming peace, salvation. In this time of Advent longing, we await the Savior's coming. Let us cleanse both heart and mind for the birth of Christ divine. Let us cleanse both heart and mind for the birth of Christ divine. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience and confess your sins to God. Let's now awaken in our hearts a deep sense of sorrow for the sins we've committed. With confidence in God's love and mercy, let us confess our sins as we recite together the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, or fail to do, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My brothers and sisters, as an act of penance for our confession today, I ask that as we enter this new liturgical year, this season of Advent, we put some time aside for prayer in how we will be welcoming our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into our homes, our lives, our everyday living. This is the season of hope, of expectation, of waiting for the coming of our Lord and Savior. Although we certainly know that he is coming as the infant child of Bethlehem at Christmas, and we know he is coming one day in glory to judge the living and the dead, we also know that he comes to us in moments where we can reach out in help, in caring, in concern, in love. Let us be attentive, let us be awake to those ways in which we can encounter our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. And with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wait with longing for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. My soul looks for the Lord more than sentinels for daybreak. Good is the Lord to one who waits for him, to the soul that seeks him. 
It is good to hope in silence for the saving help of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son as our Savior and Redeemer. May we be his true and faithful followers, so that when he comes again, he may find us awake and performing our assigned tasks. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, with the mountains quaking before you, why you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, we are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, you make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. And we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account, for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you await for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coals. In your mercy, cleanse me, that I worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I once again want to share a short reflection with you on the, this Holy Gospel, and especially as we begin a, a new liturgical year, we begin our time of waiting and expectation for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be the name of Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. As we begin this new liturgical year, as we begin this time of hope and expectation and waiting for the Lord, we hear in the Gospel of St. Mark our Lord reminding his disciples to be watchful, to be alert. We've used the word even over the past few Sundays, to stay awake. When he comes suddenly, it says, and he may not come and find you sleeping, what I say to you, I say to all, watch. We remind ourselves that when we speak of this kind of watching or staying awake, it's, it's not a passive one. It's one that takes some work, some constant, concentration. In fact, the, the same word that is translated here, alert or watch, is the same word that would be translated into English as be attentive. It's something that I've been saying, not here for only a small number are gathered, but when I celebrate Holy Mass, either in St. Stanislaus Cathedral, here in Scranton or at the, the parishes I visit, when it comes time for the readings, for the, the first and second reading, the responsorial psalm between them, the gospel reading, I remind those in the church to be attentive to the Word of God. I think being attentive is really the hallmark of this Advent season. We find ourselves in a situation that is, is described quite well in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Behold, Isaiah says, concerning God, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds like polluted rags, all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. We try, my brothers and sisters, to continue on in our good ways, in our 
good deeds one for another, and especially maybe in this time of difficulty, we continue to reach out, but we also know that we have fallen short in what is expected, in what is necessary for our own religious life. It is such a disappointment that there are so many who can safely come to church, who can be a part of the worship, but have now chosen not to. That's not to say there are not those who, because of some medical condition, because of some medical concern, can't join in that worship. But I think that so many have just fallen away. They've withered, as Scripture tells us, like weeds. An Advent, uh, a new liturgical year, is a chance for us to redouble our efforts, to turn to Almighty God as we call upon Him to once again come down from heaven, to rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking, as again Isaiah says. And we know that He will come in a Bethlehem stable. We know that one day He will come for us all at the final judgment, but we must ask him to come to us individually, as a family, as a community of faith, to reinvigorate us now. Jesus desires to come into not only our world, but individually each into our hearts. We need to be about the work of the worship of God, the work of building up his kingdom. Jesus himself said it to his disciples in this morning's gospel. Be watchful, be alert. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home, places his servants in charge, each with his own work. And my brothers and sisters, for the moment, we are in charge of our own lives. But the question, I suppose, is whose work are we about in this time when we cannot see the Master? Are we about only the work of selfishness? The work of looking only inward, the, look, the work of pleasing only ourselves, or maybe just ourselves and one or two others, or are we about the work of worship, acknowledging God in our lives as ruler and creator? Are we about the work of prayer? reaching out to him, asking him to continue to strengthen us in the good works that we do one for another? Are we about the work of love and help, compassion and mercy and caring one to another? Do we deprive others of our presence, especially during the worship of Almighty God in the time of Holy Mass? Are we keeping ourselves apart from him, not out of any concern for the health of ourselves or others, but rather out of laziness, out of sleepiness? Now is the time that we are to wake ourselves up, to be alert, to be watchful, as Jesus says that he may not come suddenly and find you sleeping. But I say to you, I say to all, watch, be awake, be alert, be attentive. You see, my brothers and sisters, we have opportunities, many opportunities, to find ourselves in a moment of prayer, 
when we arise each morning, before our head hits the pillow each night, before any tasks we take up, we have the opportunities to gather together to worship Almighty God, not only individually, but as a community of faith, a people gathered in His name, and we must, even in difficult times, we must gather for worship. And we have an opportunity to continue to do good works in health, in building up the kingdom of God. Jesus reminds us that each has their own work. It is worship, it is prayer, it is acts of loving kindness. My brothers and sisters, let us begin this new liturgical year. Let us begin this time of Advent, this time of awaiting the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not a month away at Christmas, not only away the, the time of the second coming, but Jesus is around us, coming to us at every moment, in every other person, in every situation. Let us be attentive to see our Lord, and in seeing him, to serve him, to love him, to build his kingdom. Let us, my brothers and sisters, as we wait, let us watch. Let us be alert and attentive to the Christ who is coming to us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. As Advent starts and a new liturgical year begins, we hear our Lord challenging us to be alert and ready to meet him. The prayers we offer for others express a faith that is both attentive and alive. Our response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Polish National Catholic Church, that it will be united in faith Together with the bishops and all the clergy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders, both within our church and within our world, will act with mercy and integrity and keep God's ways always in mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and our communities of faith, that during Advent we will be awake and attentive to Christ's word and to his presence among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are distracted by the world's pleasures may return to the saving grace of the Spirit. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this Advent season, we will all seek pardon and peace within the sacrament tents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer any affliction, physical, mental, or spiritual, that because of the generous love of Christ, peace and healing will also abound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That mercy and love may perfect those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, my brothers and sisters, for all those intentions that we each hold within our own hearts. That in calling on the love of the Lord Jesus, our prayers will be answered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, loving Father, as we prepare ourselves for the return of your Son by hearing his word and gathering at the offering of his sacrifice. We ask this all through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine, and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which you make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Almighty God, you have set aside this season to nourish our hope and our trust. You gathered us in expectation around our holy altar, transform our gifts and return them to us, that we may lack no spiritual gift as we await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For through the promised sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you reveal your goodness and unending love. 
sharing in the hope of patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church, asking you to defend and guide it throughout the world. We offer them for me, your unworthy servant, all my brother bishops, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and other ministers who profess the true faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your people, Lord, especially our brothers and sisters for whom we now pray. In a special way, we remember in prayer all of the pastors, members of our parishes, the Polish National Catholic Church, all of our family and friends, those who continue to be affected in this time of coronavirus. Remember all of us who are present here, who truly believe and are devoted to you. We offer this sacrifice of praise to you, our living, eternal, and true God, for ourselves and all those we love, for the redemption of our souls with hope for our salvation. Together with the whole church, we honor the Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, Jesus Christ. We also honor the apostles and martyrs, as well as all those who have lived and died confessing your name. In remembering them, we desire to follow their example and so gain your love and help. Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Grant us your peace in this life, preserve us from spiritual damnation, and count us among your chosen people. Bless, accept, and approve this offering we now make it to you, and let it be pleasing to you. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit, and let it become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he suffered and died, our Lord desired to make his love known to his disciples and all who would follow him. He therefore instituted these sacred mysteries, by which he joined himself with them, spiritually and bodily, in his whole being, and abides with us forever. At that moment, so sacred for all of humanity, Jesus took bread into his holy hands, and looking up to you, his Almighty Father, he gave you thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Father, in celebration of the memory of Jesus Christ, your Son, we, your people, recall his passion, 
resurrection from the dead, and ascension to glory. From the many gifts you have given us, we offer you this pure, holy, and spotless offering, the holy bread of life and the holy cup of eternal salvation. Look favorably on these offerings and accept them, as you once accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, and the sacrifice of our father in faith Abraham, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. In humility we ask, Father, that these offerings be carried by your angel to your high altar in heaven, so that we, who receive the sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with your grace and blessing. Lord, remember our brothers and sisters who have died and gone before us marked with the sign of faith. May these and all who rest in Christ find happiness, light, and peace. And we, who trust in your love, also ask to be included in the fellowship of your holy apostles, martyrs, and saints, who offer their lives to you. They were filled with your justice and mercy, and because they lived in accord with the teachings of Jesus, gained eternal joy. Count us among them, Father, not because of what we truly deserve, but because you are willing to forgive us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom you give us all these gifts, you fill them with life and goodness, you bless them, and make them holy. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And uh, my brothers and sisters, those who are joining with us in these time of prayer, I extend to all of you a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, let us now pray together the second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. 
I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, since we cannot receive Holy Communion together in this time of worship, let us together make an act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Possess me with your heart, that which I take is for you. May the gift I have received be healing and strength, now and forever. I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one may take your crown. Let us pray. Lord, Jesus Christ, through your coming to us in the Word and in the Eucharist, may we be prepared to face you at the final hour. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send forth, O heavens, do from the sky. Pour forth, O cloud, the just one most high. Hold back your wrath, Lord. Hold back your anger. Our sins forgive, Lord. 
save us from our languor. Send forth, O heavens, do from the sky, pour forth your clouds, but just one most high. Open ye heavens, shower us with favor, and from your bosom send at last our Savior. 